Hello, brothers and sisters. I hope you are doing well. I really hope that um, I'm able to get this out today because I this is take two. I just did a 30-minute video, and which I know is long, trying to get this dream and the message out that the Lord had given me. And after I stopped it, it was gone. So we're going to try this, take two, and I'm going to see if I can get this out a little bit sooner than 30 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and explain to you how I received it on the 5th of August. August 5th, 2022, I had this dream. The Lord gave me the dream. I woke up from that, came down, did my Bible study, um, received a word of knowledge from the Lord on different things going on in the world for even my daughter. And then uh, he interpreted the dream and it kind of goes all together. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. I'm going to try to do it in a timely fashion, but I want the Holy Spirit to leave. I don't want to lead. lead. I don't want anything to get missed. So uh, Father God, I pray in Jesus name that you will take the lead on this that nothing will be missing. I pray that um, you would go and prepare everybody's heart who has listened to this, that you would encourage, strengthen, but also convict, Lord God, if anybody needs this message and needs to be shaken to be woken up, Lord God. I pray that um, your Holy Spirit would be with everybody as their helper, that you would lead and guide everybody in Jesus' name. All right, so the dream. Okay, I'm going to give it... This is going to go exactly how it was given to me. So I'm going to tell you my dream, which is what I woke up from that morning. I had a dream. I was at my father's house. I was hanging out. I began picking up. I believe I was going to my mom's house for a short period of time, just a little bit. I had a friend that showed up and she wanted to go with me. She had a couple children that she was watching with her and she wanted, I don't know how long she was watching them, but she wanted them she wanted to take them all and go with me. And I said that she could because, you know, my mom worked and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. We all got in the vehicle and we all started to go. We came up to the store and she had gotten out and she began speaking to this man. She was off talking to this man. And I, for a second, was outside of the vehicle, was watching my phone and um, I was looking, watching a YouTube video or something on my phone. And I went and got back into the car. I began to slowly drive looking for her. And I seen her by the store. She was talking to somebody. And I yelled out the window and said, hey, are you coming? And she said, no. And I was thinking, she's like, no, go ahead. And I was thinking, I have these children that she's watching. She's going to leave these children with me. And so... I was going to get out of the car and go plead with her to come and get in the car. Like, you have these children, you know, that you're watching over. You're, you know, you got to come. And so I went to go put the car in the park and to get out, but the car wouldn't stop. It kept rolling. And I did this a couple times. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And the car would not stop rolling. And so I didn't get to um, go plead with her. I left, like... And we, next scene, automatically jump to the next scene. I was at the father's house. Me and my children there. I didn't see the other children, but I'm assuming they were all there. We showed up there. All I seen was all white. Like, the walls and stuff were white. It was like I was in a house. Okay, all the walls and stuff were white. I don't know if it really matters, but um, I know for sure Keegan was there. He was right next to me, and he had to use the bathroom for some reason. And I had this little potty that we have here, and he went... And I went over to the sink and my father was standing over there. And it wasn't my father in real life. It was a man. And I couldn't see all of his features, but I knew he had longer brown hair. And he, I knew it was to be my father in the dream. But he turned the water, which he is a living water, right? Jesus is a living water. He turned the water on for me so I could dump the potty in the sink, okay? So that was a dream. So... I came down here that morning, I written my dreams down, and then I got to my Bible study, and I was reading Revelation 6 that morning, and I had had a dream a few days back of my daughter, and I don't really want to get into too, too much detail because I just really feel like it's a personal message for her, but I do want to say 
you know that she's not walking. If you've been with me for a while, you know that my daughter has not been walking with the Lord, but she's been raised to know the Lord and how important it is to have a relationship. She has seen, she has seen things that other people whose parents don't walk with the Lord have not seen. She's seen miracles and the Lord show up for things. She's, so she knows, okay? But she's gone through things in her life where she's, you know, she kind of questions or has some doubts. So I've been praying for her, okay? I had a dream with her the other night. And the dream that I had with her, I'm not going to go into the details of the dream because I feel like it's very personal. But I can share that the scripture that the Lord gave for me from the details in the dream. Go with uh, the Church of Laodicea in Revelation 3 verses 14 all the way down to 20. And I'm going to go ahead and share this scripture with you because not only is it for her, but it's for anybody who is fighting being lukewarm and that it's time to wake up right now, repent and come to Jesus. Okay. So these are the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one. I wish you were one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. You do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me refined in the fire so that you can become rich, white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness. And solve to put on your eyes so you can see those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and meet with that person and they with me. The Lord shared me this scripture. Okay. And this was for, he started sharing a lot of things. Um, um, I was in Revelation 6 that morning, but he had shared that for my daughter in the dream that I had before. Okay, this goes with the message that he given me on that day that I had that dream on the 5th. Even though I was in Revelation 6, he also had reminded me about that and told me that morning that he was going to give me an opportunity because he was merciful and kind. He was going to give me the opportunity to go and see my daughter one more time to try and plead with her to get on the ark, to repent and to come to him and to seek him because he does not want anybody to be left here. Tribulation is going to be horrible. It's going to be God's wrath. And although tribulation, there will be, I believe wholeheartedly from the scripture that there is going to be another rapture. You are going to have to go through a lot of things that you will wish, you will wish that you would have woke up and got in the ark for the pre-trib rapture. You don't want to stay. You don't want to stay for the next rapture. Okay. And the Lord you know, he told me that he's merciful and kind and he has given the opportunity for these girls, Noel and Paige, to come and get on the ark and go to heaven in the rapture and not stay behind, okay? So with that, he also, I read Revelation 6 that day and he was talking about the seals, all right? And I had asked him in the different, um, in the scenario of the white horse, and peace being taken from the earth and then the food shortages. It's not, it doesn't take a genius to understand. You look around, you know it's being talked about. There is a, a global, worldwide food shortage coming and we're going to be skin seeing it this winter. I don't believe that it's going to be super bad. I believe that the rapture is going to happen, which would take, you know, a percentage of people, a small percentage of people off the earth. But I believe that that is coming. So I believe the white horse rider is going to ride out. I believe after the white horse rider rides out, peace is going to go because peace is the second seal. And peace is going to be removed when the Holy Spirit goes. Okay. The Holy Spirit is on the bride. The bride, the Holy Spirit will be taken from the bride. Okay. The bride will go. And okay. So then, 
um, that is going to happen. So all these things. So the Lord is just showing me that things are going to happen really fast after the bride goes. But the bride is getting ready to go. So if we know that we have food shortages coming in this winter, the bride's not going to see the food shortages. We are going to be taken. We're in a close range of time to where we will be taken. I would not be surprised. I am not setting dates. I've never been one to just set a date. But I believe that we maybe only have at the most through September before we go. And I believe that's at the very most, okay? And so um, with this dream that he gave me, uh, okay, he had shared with me um, through talking with Veronica. So after he gave me the word of knowledge with my daughter that he is merciful and kind, is going to give me one more opportunity to go plead with them to get on the ark before we go to heaven. I called Veronica a little bit after that. But she didn't answer. But the Holy Spirit was on me so strong. I was pacing just back and forth in my kitchen, praying in the Spirit. And as I was praying, the Holy Spirit was interpreting. And I know it was the Lord's heart. It was just, I could feel he doesn't want anybody to be left here. He he doesn't desire that anybody would perish. Anybody would he, he wants everybody to wake up and to come to him. He wants his bride with him. He doesn't want anybody being left because you want to be in the world. He wants you to seek him and to come to him. He wants you to go. Uh, tribulation is supposed to be just for to get people who don't know him to repent, not for his bride. So anyways, I called Veronica called me back and we were talking and going over the dream. And I'm going to share with you quickly the interpretation of the dream and what the Lord had shared me through us talking. We talked it through as I usually do with her. And that's how the Lord, a lot of times, if I... Uh, talk it over with her. He'll help me interpret it. So the woman I believe in the dream represents um, the church or maybe some of the bride who has um, had a relationship with the Lord, who has tasted and seen that he is good. and But their eyes are in the world. She was talking to a man. So I don't know if she's... Um, you know, dealing with loneliness or, you know, maybe a relationship she's trying to hold on to or uh, what the case is. But she was talking to the man. She didn't want to get in the car. She didn't want to let go and come and get in the car with me and the children. The children could possibly represent the babies in Christ. Maybe she was ministering. Maybe this could represent, you know, um, maybe some other people who who do love the Lord, but they're in the world a little bit, but they have sown recently. Maybe some people come and ask them and, and, and they've been able to, uh, kind of share the gospel and share with babies in Christ and, uh, maybe they're babies in Christ or maybe they're children. I don't fully know that part, but what I do know is that the vehicle I was in, you know, that vehicle took us to the father's house and, um, I didn't share with you that I had, I don't think I shared with you that I had changed my mind. And instead of going to my mother's house, I decided to go to my father's house instead. And so when I, while I was at the store in the car before I got out of the car, okay? So um, the car would not stop, okay? It kept rolling. Even though I tried putting it in the park to get out to go and plead with her, the car would not stop rolling. I believe the Lord has represented showed me that this represents the fact that the ark is moving and it's not stopping. You can get on, but I went to go plead with her and I couldn't even, like I said, hey, are you getting on? Are you coming? And she said, no, go ahead. She didn't want to go. She wanted to stay there. She didn't want to go to the father's house with me and these children. She wanted to stay, which there's a lot of believers who don't understand uh, I don't think that they fully grasp how awesome heaven is. And I think they're still kind of scared to go because they're used to this place. And and so that may represent they still kind of have a little bit of fear of the unknown. Okay, so, but the next scene we were in at my father's house. And I know that was heaven. I know there was white walls and I know that it was, that was my father. And so, um... I believe that it goes, he gave me that dream and then he shared with me that morning that with my daughter's situation, he was going to allow me to go to her one last time because of his 
goodness and his kindness to plead with her to get on the ark or get in the car before we go. This is one last opportunity. So we are so close and I wouldn't be surprised if we're we're out of here within, you know, a month at the most. And so um I just I pray that um, you know, everybody everybody wakes up. And I don't know about you, but it's just on my heart everywhere I go. I'm wearing my shirt. Repent. Jesus is coming because we need to be speaking it right now and warning people. When Jesus does come and take his bride, I mean, there's still hope, but it's going to be really hard. But I'm going to leave you with that. I'm 15 minutes in. I don't want it to be ruined trying to upload this. So um, I just pray. I'm going to put a couple videos in the description. Um, of some encouraging words that I got this morning uh, from some brothers and sisters that uh, from, from, from some brothers, two brothers in the Christ um, sorry, a couple of brothers in Christ they shared some dreams that they had and so I'm going to go ahead and share them and put them in um, the description as well as a video if you're struggling and you want to go in the rapture, but you're kind of afraid because heaven is unknown to you, I'm going to put a video of a brother who's a pastor, and he's had encounters with the Lord for a long time, and he experienced heaven, and he came back and shared his testimony, and you just can feel the Holy Spirit all over it. And so it also goes with scripture, and it also goes with other brothers and sisters who have had the same or similar experiences. So I'm going to share all those. I hope that you are blessed. Please, please pray that you are counted worthy to escape all that is about to happen so you can stand before the Son of Man, repent, and come to Jesus now. There's still time. We don't know how much is left any moment, any second. In the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be gone. So I love you and I hope to see you soon either in another video or hopefully in the air on the way up. God bless you.